David Gwenham in ESPN. LeBron, the uh, plus minus numbers last night with you on the court versus off the court were reflective of yeah. some of the numbers you saw throughout the regular season and also reflective of the team's record when you, you know, playing a game or versus not playing a game. Game four of the Eastern Conference Finals, uh, you know, you missed some time and, and the Cavs were able to stem the tide. Um, what can be done moving forward to empower this team to be able to you know perform at a consistent level when you're taking a break or from a game or, or from a, a you know a brief rest in a game i, I don't know i don't have a question uh, the answer to that day right now um you know obviously um, you know i hate the fact that you know we're not able to you know just try to keep the leads and if i come out the game or not even keep the leads just sustain it you know, and uh, I hate it for my teammates. I hate it for myself. I, I mean, I hate it for everybody that's involved. And, uh, you know, last night it was another one of those instances. You know, I came out with 143, I believe, in the first quarter. We up 30, uh, I think it was up 31 29. And then, you know, they went on a quick 10 0 run. You know, it was 39 um, 31. Uh, well, 32 after they reviewed the three that uh, added another point. And, um, you know, and against a team like this, those type of runs you just can't you can't afford. And like you said, throughout the course of the regular season or throughout the course of the postseason, you know, we just got to find better ways to, uh, you know, as a collective unit, um, having the right pieces on the floor or the guys that's on the floor, they have to do their job and uh, try to do it at a high level, no matter who's on the floor. You know, and uh, I have, you know, so something we have to we have to figure out. Tom Withers, uh, Tom Withers, AP. Sorry, Brian, they asked me to stand up for this. Um, ten years ago, you began your finals run against a team that was in the midst of a dynasty. Now you're up against a team that looks like it's it's built to last. Um, does that change the challenge? Does that fuel you? How do you feel about that? Um, well, I mean, I think it's just part of my calling to, to go against teams that's in the midst of a dynasty. And, uh, you know, this has been the best team in our league the last three years. Um, you know, and they won a championship. And last year, it was a, you know, the greatest regular season team we had played. It was probably one of the best postseason teams that we that everybody has ever seen as well. But we were just able to overcome that. And, uh, and and they're playing like one of the best teams once again. So, um, you know, like I said, there's been times throughout my career where I've just played teams that was just in the midst of something that can last uh, for a long time. And obviously this team is built, you know, um, to be able to do that with the talent that they have, um, you know, so. You know, we see what happens. Obviously, you never know what's going to happen, but as it stands right now, yeah, they, they really look pretty cool good as far as the future. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. I know yeah, you don't I, want to look uh, too far down the road, but night, as well as you're playing and as good as you're feeling, a, have you kind of recalibrated like how long you yeah. want to stay around? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I feel good. Um, I actually feel better. I don't feel good right now, but I feel pretty good with my game is right now. Um, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it, uh, how long I want to stay around. Um, and I definitely want to compete. I want to compete for championships. I haven't seen it too much, but, uh, you know, they're doing a good job sending two guys, you know, Zaza and Draymond box me out. But they then freeze it up for Kevin. You saw Kevin in the second half. What do you have for both? Three or four offensive rebounds. In, Mo Hamilton, in basketball insiders. Uh, so, uh, LeBron, obviously, you know, you're, you're no stranger to the criticism, and, right? That means there are some people Kevin, and that Kevin feel that with and 50 and seconds and left in the game, still you guys are too. So even though they I might like not to see you kind of force score in, and in those with it, moments to try to score that know, basket yourself as opposed to dishing it away. I'm just curious to know what your message to those critics would be. I don't I don't, I don't know if you've been here for the last couple of years or heard me talk. I don't know. Um, you know, tomorrow's another opportunity for us to uh, um, go out I had 101 drives and, and last night. Game, so. That's, I, didn't, I didn't have 101, but you get the gist of it. We know what it is. We know, we know what's, what's up. Sorry, what's I didn't go for 102. We know how important this so, game is. But uh, at the end of the day, I don't, and, I don't uh, really get come out what, what is the critic. Uh, it got. doesn't matter. Uh, one of my favorite quotes when I really stopped caring about what people say is Theodore Roosevelt, the man in the arena. So if you can really that, you can see where I'm at right now in my life. I it doesn't matter. If you could have the play over again, would you still make that same pass? Uh, if I could have the play over again, um, I would come off a three screen um, situation. Draymond would switch on me with five fouls. Uh, I would get him leaning. Uh, I would drive left. I would see KD step up. I would see Steph Curry drop on Kevin. And I would see Kyle Culver in the corner. 
uh, to one of the greatest three-point shooters in this league history and give him an opportunity in the short corner. Oh, really? Uh, we'll do the same as that. Yeah. Ken Berger with The Athletic. Um, Ron, to your, to your earlier point about KD, when, when you changed teams and went to Miami, it was a different time. You, in order to get a player of your caliber or Kevin's caliber, you had to pretty much clear the decks and, and start over. Now you have a situation where a team is able to be a championship team already and add a player of Kevin's caliber. Um, is that good or bad for the league, in your opinion? And for a guy who pours his heart and soul into this, is it fair? Yeah, I mean, that's part of the rules. I mean, uh, the difference between my situation is, uh, well, the, the, the best thing with Golden State situation is that a lot of the guys are drafted. They drafted a lot of their guys. Um, they drafted well, three of their best players were already drafted, so they're able to hold on to them because they own their bird rights. If everybody knows the CBA, so they able to keep Steph, Steph Clay, and Draymond, um, and able to go out and, and sign someone else like they did this past summer by just getting rid of a couple pieces in Harrison Barnes and um, you know not resigning Barbosa and, and Bogut and uh, you know guys from last year's team. So allowed them to go do that. Um, you know, in my, in my case, going to Miami, um, we had to clear a lot of space because they didn't earn, they didn't, they didn't have anybody as far as you know guys that they wanted to keep as far as bird rights besides UD and D Wade. You know, they had the opportunity to go get two of us, and they did that in me and Bosch, and then we was able to to, to finagle a way to get Mike Miller uh, because some of us took pay cuts and uh, got some other guys. You know, we had Rio because he was drafted. Um, but it was, uh, it was a different situation, totally different, totally different. But uh, is it fair? I don't, I don't care. I mean, I think it's great. I mean, it's great for our league. I mean, right now, look at our, look at our TV ratings. Uh, look at the money our league is pouring in. I mean, guys are loving the game. Our fans love the game. I mean, who am I to say if it's fair or not? I mean, I'm a, no matter who am I going against, if I'm going against, you know, Four Hall of Famers, like I said before the series started with Draymond, Clay, Steph, and, and, and KD, or if I'm going against two or one, whatever the case may be, I'm always excited to play the game, and I'm not one to judge and say if it's fair or not if guys are adding, you know, players to their team. So, I mean, that's what you want to do. I mean, is it fair that the New York Yankees in the 90s was adding piece after piece after piece after piece? Um, I mean, it's, if you have the opportunity to do that, is it fair that the Cowboys added Deion Sanders? I mean, listen, I mean, it happens. It's, it's sports. You know, you can have an opportunity to sign one of the best players uh, and you can do it. Go ahead and do it. Uh, why not? If I become an owner, I'm going to try to sign everybody. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you, LeBron. Coach Lewis next. <laughs> well, it sounds